probably the most fun barbarian build out there, which hits like a truck, instantly erases elites from the battlefield, sometimes even one shots bosses. And this time though, we're adding death blow to the mix to deal even more damage to elites, one shotting them, and of course, added survivability for the highest difficulty in the game. In this guide, I'm gonna share everything you need to know about it to have the most fun barbarian build out there, stop mindlessly spinning on the battlefield. So let's get right to it. I first want to quickly thank every single one of you guys for the awesome support on my previous build videos in which I already showed you the beginnings where it all started with my Barbarian Brawl Ren build. Today though we're gonna take things to the next level. We're no longer playing with an ultimate, instead with Dead Blow to literally deal millions and millions of damage. So let's start off with a skill tree. This one is super simple right now. We only need a couple passives as most of the power comes from our aspects as well as the Paragon board. So our base attack is the Lunging Strike with which we deal a lot of damage with our main weapon. We also have Enhanced Lunging Strike and Combat Lunging Strike. So every time when we critical hit, we will grant Berserking. And if you have a high crit chance, this will happen almost all the time. We don't need a Berserk Ultimate. This will be enough to have permanent berserking more about that in my paragon board for your core abilities you want to take rent you want to level this one up as much as possible so you can deal a lot of bleed damage over time this will also extend the duration of vulnerable enemies by two seconds if you upgrade it and also give you some fury back every time when you cast it so it will be a super cheap cost while this is basically how we constantly apply vulnerability to our enemies if you're struggling a little bit with your fury you can generate some extra fury with endless fury i only spent one point in it because i really don't see the issue we're going to talk about how you can generate some additional fury a little bit later but um, if we move on to the next part of the tree right here we have imposing presence, gain additional maximum life, which is pretty important for the end game to have added survivability. You can also go with martial vigor, so you have reduced damage taken from elites. I decided to disable this because I wanted to power up some other abilities. Then you also want to have a defensive ability. If you were just getting started with this build, I recommend you to go with Challenging Shout. It has a 20 second cooldown, but you will gain 40% damage reduction. You can do this whenever you engage on a big pack of enemies. You can upgrade it even further to gain bonus maximum life, while Tactical Challenging Shout is also nice because then you will get extra fury buildup each time you take damage. Right now though, I play with Iron Skin because this one can dramatically boost your damage output. It basically gives you a barrier and there is an aspect which gives you plus 50% damage when you have a barrier active. So you can basically instantly boost your damage output do this all the time with only 11 seconds cooldown right here we also have enhanced iron skin so we will have extra barrier amount and also the strategic iron skin also grant 15 percent base life as fortify double this if cost below 50 percent hp so if you're in trouble if you want to deal a ton of damage iron skin is going to be amazing we also have two brawl skills, which basically make this build a lot of fun to play. You're literally dancing on the battlefield, instantly taking out elites by pushing them against the wall. Everything will explode in the area, while it's also going to be easy to both engage and disengage with the leap. So for our charge ability, you want to make sure that, of course, we can stun enemies against the wall, but then also make them vulnerable for two seconds. We can already increase the duration of this vulnerability with, of course, the secondary rent upgrade. We can also reduce the charge cooldown by three seconds if we knock enemies against the wall. If you have more ranks on your brawl, as you can see, the cooldown will go down as well. So I don't really think you have to go for the reduced cooldown. Well, with the leap, if it doesn't hit any enemies, the cooldown will be reduced by four seconds. Power leap, if fury damages at least one enemy, you also gain 40 fury, which is a lot, especially with a low cooldown because of the high rank. You can constantly spam this one if you hit multiple enemies, also because of an aspect which we're gonna talk about in a second. Then, for the mastery skills, you want to put one point in hamstring so you can constantly crowd control enemies. A slow is crowd control, and with this build, we're going to deal increased damage against crowd controlled targets. So you're basically using your core strike rent to always apply the slow, always have the CC on. Then we also want to have the pit fighter deal increased damage to close enemies. With this build, we're always close and also have reduced damage from distant enemies. 
maximum ranks on No Mercy, increased critical strike chance against Immobilized, Turned, or Slowed. And the final passive right here is Exposed Vulnerability. If we deal direct damage with a Weapon Mastery skill, our next core skill makes enemies vulnerable for three seconds. And of course, since we're using that rent, we will apply Vulnerability and also extend its duration. So it's gonna be there for a pretty long time. That is because, of course, we're always using our death blow. We use rent, death blow, rent, death blow. So apply vulnerability, bleed slow, then bam, with a death blow, you one shot that enemy. Because of all the damage modifiers, we're also taking this rank super high. If you have it lower, you can see that it deals 18,000 to 20,000 damage. Right now, though, it's going to deal up to almost 30,000 damage. If you deal damage against bosses, the damage will be increased. So that is where you can one-shot bosses. And on the final tier, if it damages at least one enemy, you also gain Berserking for three seconds. Alternatively, you could take Fighter's Head Blow if you want to generate additional Fury. If you're still struggling a little bit with that, well, I don't think that's going to happen as every time we use your leap on multiple enemies, it instantly resets the cooldown, generate 40 Fury, so you can keep repeating that, deal a lot of brawling damage. Both of them are pretty much optional. Anyways, on our next tree, the ultimate skills, we've got uh, Temperate Fury, increased max maximum fury by one only because you want to have this one right here feel for six percent of your maximum hp for every 100 fury spent this one adds a little bit of extra survivability if you already have plenty of survivability on your build it's not necessary we don't really want to go with the swapping anymore as we're using one single weapon to deal all the damage we're going to talk about the expertise a little bit later but also the heavy handed while using two handed weapons you deal 20 percent increased critical strike damage this is amazing because we're only using two handed weapons the crits are going to be real then for the key passives, you want to go for the unconstrained because then the maximum berserk duration will be increased as well as its damage by 25%. Moving on to the Paragon board. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where the true power of this build comes in. As with the right glyphs, you're gonna hit like a truck. So many modifiers to boost your damage output. The first one is Bloodfeeder. For every X amount of dex purchased, you will gain increased damage to bleeding targets. Since you're always applying bleed with your rent ability, also of course, vulnerability, crowd control because of the slow, we will have more critical strike chance against those enemies. Almost 50% increased damage against those targets. Next up, we also have this one right here, Blood Rage. Killing a bleeding enemy has a 10% chance to grunt berserking for five seconds. The enemy doesn't have to die because of the bleeding. As long as it's bleeding, you kill it with something else. For example, the death blow or a brawl skill, you will have a chance to apply berserk. While with your base skill, you will also have this chance every time when you crit to get it the berserking. You also want to increase your damage while berserking, increase the duration while berserking, take as many strength nodes as possible. On our third Paragon board, we have the legendary node Carnage, which you don't really want to focus on. The Glyph Socket, though, is super important because this one adds another plus 70% increased damage with Axes. And since we're using Axes with every ability, this is another huge stat boost. We also get plus 12% increased critical strike damage with Axes. We also take more damage while berserking right here. We've got uh, more damage, more damage, damage reduction from close enemies. Uh, we've got some more damage while berserking. And then we also have one right here, the legendary note Decimator. Two-handed slashing weapons have up to an 8% chance to make enemies vulnerable. I do have a little bit of lucky hit, while I don't really think it's going to be necessary. Probably can remove this one once you have enough of those Paragon points to always apply vulnerability. So um, right here we've got plus extra damage with two-handed slashing weapons, more vulnerability damage, more physical damage, physical damage, physical damage, more vulnerability damage, and also this glyph socket right here to increase our damage against vulnerable enemies and also 8% increased damage while wielding two-handed weapons. So very quickly, once again, we've got a first glyph socket blood feeder with, of course, all the decks we purchase within range. You don't really need the second glyph. You want to 
move on to the next board as quick as possible. Then we have the cleaver, for which you're gonna need all the strength nodes in the area. And then we also have this legendary node decimator board with the glyph socket might. You could also go with something like Brawl to deal increased damage with Brawling, while right now we just deal a lot of damage in general versus vulnerable enemies while wielding a two-handed weapon and specifically the axe. So this, of course, is where our expertise comes in. The two-handed axe expertise. Increase your damage versus vulnerable enemies and increase your critical strike chance against vulnerable enemies. So always vulnerable, always crowd controlled, all those modifiers will make this build deal so much damage with this specific technique. If you don't find a good X, ladies and gentlemen, you could alternatively go for the two-handed mace expertise. Right here, you have a chance to gain fury with lucky hit, but also increase your critical strike damage to both stunned and vulnerable enemies. So if we quickly check out our ability assignment, the skills, you can see that on every ability, I have my arsenal selected with axes. So so this is going to be the maximum damage output with this specific build for your basic attack, your core abilities, but also your brawl skills. Just like any other build, this one heavily relies on the right legendary aspects as well as affixes for both your weapons and armor. Without them, you will miss out on so much damage. So this is a very important step once again. So let's just cover every single one of them. Once again, our critical strike chance on paper is 40% ish it's gonna be so much more with of course the right options you chose on your paragon board and abilities critical strike damage you want to put as high as possible vulnerability damage damage versus slowed or crowd controlled in general i think a little bit of extra movement speed doesn't hurt the build because it adds up to survivability it's going to make it easier to run around on the battlefield escape from sticky situations if you have things on cooldown also build a little bit of cooldown reduction so you can reset those abilities a little bit faster Lucky hit chance is not really something we focus on with this build. Also, 65-ish percent increased Berserk duration. So you will have Berserk on 24-7 as long as you stay in combat. My attack power seems a little bit low on paper, but trust me, it is so much more, especially against close targets. I forgot to mention this one right here, but uh, damage versus close is plus almost 250%. So yeah, you can add that up to the damage output. So let's start off with the helmet. This is not a very good roll. While I'm okay with it for now, it does the job. Most importantly, you want to focus on plus ranks on your death blow. This is where the high damage output one shot elites and even bosses comes in but the imprint right here the aspect your weapon mastery skills is also very important to have an additional charge so right now our death blow if we fail to one hit kill enemies with it we will have an extra charge ready so we can of course finish off our enemies reset that cooldown the chest armor is same problem, still searching for an improvement, which is pretty difficult at this level. But plus 15% damage with two-headed slashing weapons is already a very awesome affix to have. Plus physical damage, plus total armor, added survivability and damage, also very nice. While I don't really think you're going to need the barrier generation. We also have this imprint. Damaging an elite grants you a barrier. And this is where both Iron Skin and one of our weapon aspects are going to make the build so much more powerful. We're going to talk about it in a second, but uh, this is basically what it looks like. Deal 50% increased damage while you have a barrier active. On my gloves, I have stunning a bleeding enemy deals 40% of the total bleeding amount to them as physical damage. So if you first apply the bleed, vulnerability, crowd control, then ram them against the wall, you basically stun the enemy, then the bleed damage will instantly explode. And with another imprint, which I have on one of my... Um, Rings right here, enemies damaged by kick or charge will explode if they die within two seconds. So all these imprints work so well together. It's super satisfying to see all those enemies explode on the battlefield. But um, let's continue. And you can also find plus ranks of your core skills on gloves. So I think this is a very nice one to focus on. Leap creates an earthquake that deals an X amount of physical damage over time, while it also makes you a little bit tankier when you stand in it. This is a pretty bad roll. I'm still searching for a better one, but this is definitely what you want to have to deal added damage on the battlefield and also become a little bit tankier every time when you stand in the Leap Crater. Plus four ranks of Leap, plus 
three ranks of charge. This is a pretty good roll. So we will boost our damage output with both brawling skills big time. If we quickly check out this one right here, as you can see, this one is on eight and this one is on eight. Then on the boots, we have becoming injured while crowd control grants you unstoppable. So added survivability. The FX rolls aren't fantastic. While I think the max evade charges is definitely something you want to focus on with the boots because you can constantly dash away from your enemies plus movement speed. Cooldown reduction, it's a pretty bad roll, but still cooldown reduction I think is awesome to have on a necklace. Plus one rank of the heavy handed passive. You can find all sorts of plus one ranks on your necklace. So keep your eyes open for those brawl skill increases, as well as your death blow. Those are the most important ones. You don't really want to improve your rent too much because it's primarily for just applying the bleed, the crowd control and the vulnerability. Another 18% damage with two-handed slashing weapons, also a nice roll to have, while on our two rings, we have critical strike chance, damage to close enemies, very important, and critical strike damage. But also the imprint to reduce the cooldown of leap by X amount of seconds every time you hit an enemy, up to nine seconds. If you have a higher rank of leap, look at this right here, we've got 10 seconds cooldown. If you crank up your cooldown reduction a little bit more, and of course have a better roll on this with a total of nine, well, you will always instantly reset your leap's cooldown if you hit a couple enemies. We already talked about this one, enemies damaged by kick or charge will explode if they're killed within the next two seconds, dealing a lot of damage to the entire area. This one also has the perfect combo of affixes, critical strike damage, critical strike chance, damage to close enemies and maximum HP. Now, for the weapons, this is very important as well. You don't want to focus on axes in your one-handed weapon slots because you're never using these. You're always using the exact same weapon. So the plus 40% damage to healthy enemies is not going to be fantastic. You want to deal as much critical strike damage as possible. So want to take swords in those one-handed slots. The imprints are important. Distant enemies have a chance to be stunned. When they hit you, you will also deal increased damage versus stunned enemies. So if you ram them against the wall with your charge, you will deal bonus damage. While on my secondary sword, I have this imprint. Each time a core skill deals direct damage to an enemy, your next charge or leap will also deal increased damage damage. Your charger leap will start building up its damage. So at a certain point, it becomes super powerful. You're just constantly rending, death blow, rending, death blow, then leap to an enemy and that specific leap or charge is going to hit like a trick. Also very important, damage versus close enemies, strength, critical strike damage. Our bludgeoning weapon doesn't have fantastic rolls right here, but it also comes with increased strength, damage to slowed, we're slowing enemies with our rent, and also after spending 100 fury, your next mastery skill will deal almost plus 200% increased damage. If you're approaching a boss, you basically just want to rent basic attack, rent basic attack. So you're building up your weapon mastery skill, then you will have a little icon on the bottom of the screen that will say your next mastery skill is gonna be lethal, ladies and gentlemen. So then you can just run to the boss and then bam, one shot, the boss is gone. That is basically how the build works. While of course, you wanna increase your damage even more with your X. Still wanna find a better one, but also damage to close enemies at almost the maximum roll. And deal, of course, plus 50% increased damage while you have a barrier active. You will have a barrier active every time when you deal damage to an elite, which has a 30 second cooldown, but with the iron skin, 11 seconds cooldown, we will also have a barrier for five seconds. So you will have different ways of applying a barrier of increasing your damage output by 50%. Do this if you are a little bit on low HP because then you're double the amount with the fortify. For the gems, for our armor, we wanna go with rubies. You wanna increase your maximum HP as much as possible. If you don't have a lot of bonus maximum life rolls on your armor, this is not gonna be that efficient. So you wanna make sure to get extra of that on your helmet, I think leggings, and also your rings. For your weapons, you wanna go with sapphires. So increase your critical strike damage to crowd controlled enemies. With our rent, our core skill, we will always apply the slow because of our passive, which we talked 
talked about earlier, this one right here, the hamstring, your bleeding affects slow enemies. So you only have to put one point in this on your jewelry. You want to have plus 250 armor or well, the skills basically, which will make you a lot tankier as well. The nice thing is armor doesn't only decrease the physical damage you take, but it also contributes to non-physical damage taken. So it basically counts as resistance. So there you have it, a lot of information, but I can guarantee you this is probably the most fun build you will ever find for Barbarian. And it hits like a trick. It's super satisfying. One shot elites against the walls or finish them off with a dead blow. It's uh, working like a charm on higher torment difficulty, high level nightmare dungeons. But uh, yeah, if you have some suggestions for this build, questions, please do leave them in the comments down below. If you want me to make a D4 builds that GG uh, link or guide for it, let's say a written one, I can always do that. Share it in the comments down below. Ladies and gentlemen, leave a like if you like the build and yeah, I wish you a lot of fun with it. Right now though, it's 4am out, but I wish you an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.